Welcome back to the channel. In the previous two videos, I discussed MAP and adjusted MAP error metrics. In the next few ones, I want to talk about the theoretical properties of these and some other metrics such as mean absolute and mean squared errors that are commonly used not just in forecasting, but in machine learning in general. Of course, I will elaborate on what I mean by the theoretical properties and show how understanding these properties serves something more than intellectual curiosity and is in fact critical in making sound practical decisions as they relate to forecasting. I hope that through these videos, I will be able to convince you to never pick an error metric without considering its theoretical properties and also to discard some practices that are unfortunately still common in the field. To illustrate the importance of this discussion, I propose a thought experiment. Imagine a forecasting competition where the competition organizer uses a probabilistic data generating process to simulate the time series of interest for an interval of let's say six months. It then provides to the participants the data for the first five months and asks them to submit predictions for the last month. Obviously, the data generating process or the data for the last month is not shared with the participants. The objective of the competition is to determine who can provide the most accurate forecasts and the participant whose forecasts have the lowest make will win the competition. Our competition is participated by a few naive forecasters and an expert. Naive forecasters do not do anything complicated. They simply set their forecasts of the last month to either minimum, mean, or maximum values observed in the shared data. The expert, however, does something scientific. They analyze the data and correctly infer the underlying data generating process that the organizer has used to generate the data. It is natural to expect that the expert should win this competition, but the question is, is it possible for that not to happen? In other words, can the naive forecasters win this competition? That, of course, would be a very disappointing outcome for the science of forecasting. Surprisingly, the answer is yes, and this raises important questions about the fairness of competitions and the reliability of different error metrics. In the next few videos, we will explore how understanding the theoretical properties of different metrics and choosing the right one can prevent this from happening. By the end of these lessons, I would like you to be able to answer questions similar to the following ones. It is a common practice to rank different forecasts using one or a combination of metrics. When does this practice result in misguided conclusions and how to properly rank forecasts? What does it mean for an error metric to be formally better than the other? What are the possible criteria for assessing the reliability of an error metric? How to assess whether winning a forecasting competition was due to actually having better forecasts rather than simply being lucky. I look forward to seeing you here again as we go through this very interesting and important discussion. Thank you for watching the video.